Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to tonight's masterclass. Um, very pleased to see so many of you here. Um, and uh, I'm just going to do, do a bit of preamble, I think, until uh, um, we've got connected properly to um, Zoom and Facebook. I'm live streaming this into the Biz Magicians community Facebook group as well as appearing live here on Zoom. But everything seems to be working fine. The tech is working, the recording is working, so we're all good. So um, let me know. I'm assuming you can hear me, those of you who are in the room. Uh, if you can, then let me let me know if my, my lips are moving and you're not hearing anything. And uh, I'll see what I can do about that. But it seems to be uh, seems to be working OK. So um, great to see so many of you here. And um, Brilliant. Thank you, Anne-Marie. That's, uh, that, that's perfect. Those of you who've been in my workshops before will probably notice that I'm not in my usual haunt. I'm not in my usual star festooned background. Um, and that's because I'm actually up in Scotland at the moment, uh, visiting my mum. And I'm currently in my, um, what was actually my teenage bedroom. So it's a slightly different venue to the one um, I've been used to uh, beaming in from but um i'm having a very nice time here in scotland and it's uh, uh lovely quite pleasant weather here for a change so that's um that's good um so what i wanted to do really was just talk you through um how this session is going to work and um uh, and I'll be sharing my screen shortly, so uh, you'll be able to uh, see what I'm going to be talking about on the screen. Um, I apologise in advance for the fact that my Zoom screen is probably a bit pink. I've, I'm using my laptop, which is um, has some issues with its camera, so it makes me look very kind of um, uh, rosy-faced. I'm not quite as rosy-faced as this in, in real life, but I'm not the most important thing in this. The most important, important thing is going to be the information that I'm sharing with you. So uh, hopefully that will come through loud and clear. So whether you're watching this uh, in the room with me on Zoom or are watching it on the replay or are watching it in the Facebook group on a streaming, um, you're very welcome here. Just to let you know, I'm not able to uh, watch the Facebook group. So if you're saying hello to me in there, hello back to you. Good to Good to have you connecting with me in any uh, any way that works. So let me um, kick off by sharing my screen and we can, we can go from there. Let me just check that I'm actually sharing the right one. There we are. That should be working. You should be seeing my, um, my slides there. I hope you are. Um, and uh, great. Thank you, Shirley. Perfect. Good stuff. Well, that's that's worked out well so far. Everything so far has worked out perfectly well. So this is this is this is good. Um, what I, I wanted to let you know, by the way, is that I am going to um, share these slides with you after the uh, session. So although I certainly invite you to take notes and feel free to scribble down any notes that you uh, want to, what I'd suggest you do actually is rather than just writing down what I'm saying or what's on the slide. Just bear in mind, you'll get all of that in the replay and also in the slides themselves. So what I'd invite you to do instead is to treat this almost like a pretty fast moving workshop. So I won't be pausing in order for us to do any practical work together, but you can workshop it for yourself as we go through. So as I share what I'm going to share with you, I want you to think of it from the perspective of your own business and uh, the offers that you are working on in your own business, either offers that you've already created or offers that you are thinking about creating in the future. Um, it will absolutely work well if we do that. Um, and really what this class is about, as you will know, is about exploring different ways of describing our services, our offers, uh, so that they become an easier sell both for us and also for our, um, our our ideal clients, for people who are interested in working with us. Um, and we're recording this on Friday. So I think probably many of us will have had a really busy week. We'll have been doing all kinds of different things. So what I thought we'd start with is what I tend to start all of, all of my containers with, which is an energetic practice. Now, energetic practices, which I like to couple with the strategic entrepreneurial activities that we get up to, um, you can be a whole range of different things, a whole range of different uh, methods. So I, I've worked with magic, energy work, tapping, human design, 
tarot, meridian massage, Reiki, Qigong, all kinds of things. And many of you are practitioners in the things that we often use as energetic practices. They all work, but I'm going to do something really simple tonight. I think this is one of the uh, the best energetic practices that there is when you're an entrepreneur, especially when you're busy and you've got a lot on. It's just taking three breaths. And I invite you to do that with me. Just take three breaths to recenter yourself, to ground yourself and to become present so that you can take in what we're about to go into today. So three conscious breaths, just starting with an inhale. And just allowing that to relax you, hold at the top and then out. Let all the tension of the week melt away. And then inhale. Feeling your shoulders relax and your muscles loosen. And relax and exhale as you do. And then the final breath, just breathing in. Hold at the top. And then out, just at your own pace. Ah. So, let's get started. Let's get, get stuck in. So, why this class? Why did I decide to put this class together? Um, well, really, it's because yeah, I see a lot of the people I work with, a lot of entre online entrepreneurs that I work with, coming up against a couple of big problems when we try to market our stuff. Certainly I've experienced these problems. Um, one issue can be that we struggle struggle to figure out what to say, or what are the specifics of what we can say, other than here's my thing that I put together, it's really great, do you want it? Or once we've found a more nuanced way to talk about our stuff, we begin to feel a bit repetitive. We begin to feel like we're saying the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, and we might even get sick of hearing ourselves talking about these things. It can become really awkward for us when we are, we feel like we're turning into a broken record and we're saying the same thing again to, to people who've heard it before. And that can be true even if we really believe in what we're selling and, and know that it really, really uh has a positive imp impact or potentially positive impact on the people that we work with. And it's particularly a problem, I think, for those of us in the space of marketing things that are kind of intangible, um, energy work, you know, that kind of practice, things that aren't necessarily about concrete, solid results that you can touch and point to and describe and quantify. Also, we might find that... Um, you know, we market a number of different things and we're trying to find different ways of talking about the different things and being clear about what the different things are. But even if we only talk about one thing, even if we only have one offer, we need to be able to talk about it in different ways because different ways of talking about our offer will attract different people within our ideal client base. And that's what we want to do. So people will respond to different ways of hearing about an offer. And the more ways that we can offer them of understanding what our offer is about, the better, the more they will then see whether it's for them or not. Uh, the, the other thing that I think is quite important about the way we talk about our offer is that it enables us to overcome client objections ahead of time. So people will have all kinds of doubts about whether an offer is right for them. And if we can help them to understand that it is for them ahead of time, that makes it so much, so much easier, so much uh, more attractive for them. So this is about giving you more ways to talk about the results of your offers, of your services. And this is true whether you have one offer, multiple offers, and it also applies to your business. So if you want different ways of talking about your business, then this is what this is all about. And results, of course, the, the results that our clients get, that's what it is all about. That's what makes our businesses viable or not viable. If we're not able to speak, speak to people about our results, then that really is how, whether our businesses will stand or, or fall on that, that basis. So um, 
what I wanted to just share with you is a little diagram I've put together just before we go into the different ways of talking about offers, which cover a couple of basic principles in offer marketing uh, so that you have a sense of where I'm coming from. And this is what I call the offer hierarchy. Uh, it's just a way to help us to think about what's really important when it comes to selling our stuff. Uh, and what's really important, of course, is um, what the people who buy it are interested in. And as you can see, I've put this together as a triangle with three different sections. The bottom section, the base section, the most important section of any offer is the outcome that it achieves. Um, the outcome is foundational. When somebody comes and accesses our service, that's what they're looking for. And it may be an outcome that they're really, really clear about. So they might say, for example, they might be interested in buying a fitness program and say, you know, I want to become lean and strong and healthy and free of aches and pains, which may be why they would buy the fitness program. Or it may be that they're not very clear. It might be that people come to you and they're not very clear about what they want, but they know that they want something better. They want a better life a better job, a better relationship, more money, more happiness, more contentment. Either way, whether they know what they want or don't know what they want, they are looking for an outcome. So outcomes become vitally important in our marketing. They become the most important thing, which is why they're at the bottom of the triangle. They're foundational. Next is energy. And by energy, I mean the app attitude and atmosphere that you create within your offer environment, whether that's a one-to-one -one coaching program or a group coaching program or a passive course or an ebook or a, a, an actual, you know, concrete, tangible thing that you sell. The energy that it creates in a person, the feeling that it gives them is really important. You know, you've probably heard the saying that people will um, how does it go? We'll remember what you won't remember what you said. They won't remember what you did, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And that's what this segment is about. This energetic piece is about how you make people feel. What energy does your container create and give them? And what's the culture that you create in that container? Even if it's a one-to-one -one session, that's really important. And then finally, the smallest and arguably the least important, but not completely unimportant bit, is the bit at the top, the elements. And by that, I mean the deliverables, the, the, the tangible things, the practicalities, the quantifiables, the nuts and bolts of what your people get as a result of being in your offer or having bought your offer. So that's things like the detail of whether it is a group coaching program or a one-to-one -one coaching program, whether it's being um delivered live on zoom like this is being done now or whether it's going to be um you know an unlisted playlist of videos on youtube or whether it's going to be a pdf download or whether it's going to be pre-recorded audio and then the details also of, of the the bits that they get the number of downloadable checklists that there are and things like that now, these things are not irrelevant they are of course relevant because people need to know what practical things they're going to get and they need to know how these offers or any offer you create is going to work you know what do they get and when do they get it once they've paid for it but um the problem i see is that so many entrepreneurs are are actually marketing mainly on the basis of elements they see this as the most important thing and they get stuck talking about the elements as though it will be the thing that will sell the offer and i promise you it isn't generally speaking most people either don't care or don't care very much about this detail other than for practical purposes so that they know when to turn up for classes etc what they care more about is the energy the way that it makes them feel and the outcome and just in terms of proportions what i suggest um certainly uh i don't suggest never talking about the deliverables because they have their place but i'd suggest that when it comes to marketing your services marketing your offers at least half of the time you should be talking about the outcomes and by talking about i mean literally when you talk about it to people 
or when you write about it in your your copy or when you create content around it or any kind of social media or newsletter material around it, at least half of the time you should be focusing in on the outcome that your offer achieves for people. Then for about 30% of the time, the energy that it precipitates within them, this is something that people aren't always very comfortable about talking about, but it's a very powerful thing to talk about. And then about 20% at most should be the deliverables. So for some people, this will flip what they've been used to on its head. I will just say, like anything I say to you in this class or anything I say to you ever, this is a guideline. It's not there to be written in stone. So please don't get your calculators out and start thinking, you know, what percentage of time have I been spending doing this? That's not what this is about. It's a rule of thumb. And I find it really useful when it comes to things like social media posting and newsletters and creating ads and speaking at events and things like that, to think about these proportions and think, am I broadly observing these proportions? So use these as the guideline. A couple of other general principles before we get into the really juicy stuff. Um, and some of these are really obvious. I'm sure you know them already. Use real language over coach jargon. Coach jargon, again, has its place, especially if you are doing something quite unique and interesting that, that requires you to talk about your, your thing in a particular way. But you need to guide people into that. So use real language first. So you know, you might be a financial coach who says things like, I'm going to help you expand your abundance zone. And you know what that means. And some other people will know what that means. But there will be some people who would really benefit from your services who will think, I don't quite get what that is. But if you say to them, my coaching program will help you double your income within a certain period of time, they'll get that. They'll understand that. Now, once they're in the offer, the work you do to help them expand their abundance zone might be the stuff that helps them achieve that outcome. But you need to talk about the the clarity of um, increasing your income first. Similarly, be specific and concrete instead of general. So it's it's more powerful. You might be offering something that would, in in all honesty, help somebody get over, for example, alcoholism. There are coaching programs that very much focus on that and, and can be very successful. But if you're trying to get somebody to see why it would be a good purchase for them, it's probably more powerful to say something like, I'll help you stop feeling the need for a weekday drink so that you can go to work the next day without a hangover. That will be very tangible and very understandable and very compelling. And then lastly, in terms of these principles, talk from their perspective, not from yours. So your journey as a coach, as a healer, or as any kind of service-based practitioner is very important. And I'll talk about this as one of the things, one of the ways to talk about your offer is to talk about your story. But don't get stuck in only talking about your story. So if you're trying to sell, um, for example, a relationship um improvement program one way to do it is to say look at me my relationship is great now but if you focus only on that you're going to lose a large proportion of your audience so you want to actually be able to convert that into um by entering this program and working with me you will know how to, how to contribute to healthy relationship interactions uh, in order that your relationship can be great and then you can match that with your your story Okay, back to preamble. Those are the principles. Everything else is kind of based upon those fundamental principles. So if you get those down, you'll be able to come up with your own ways of talking about offers. But let me run you through the different ways. So there are 21 of them. There are actually 22 because I've thrown in an extra bonus one. And the first ones I've clustered together around that important base that I talked about, the um, outcomes. So in terms of marketing by outcomes uh, just just a reminder um by the way as we go into these 21 ways i'm not suggesting you use all 21 ways all the time and certainly not all at once but think of them as a kind of pick and mix menu and use them as ideas i'm sharing ideas with you that you can then use to change things up in your marketing so you may market your offers by talking about them basically in the same way most of the time and then pulling on some of these other options. You can also 
use these options that I'm going to give you dynamically in the moment. So if you're, for example, in a sales call or in a conversation with somebody and you're talking to them about your offer or your service and you have this feeling that they are a good fit for your offer and maybe they say they feel that they're a good fit for your offer, but they're just not quite connecting. It might be because they haven't yet heard the 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 way of understanding your offer that will help them feel confident in purchasing. So you can, in a single conversation, try some of these different ways of talking about your offer. So we're starting with the foundational one, the outcomes. And the first and most obvious way of talking about, about outcomes, and this is one that we're probably most familiar with, is about marketing your offer by describing the solution that it provides your clients. And I'm gonna give you an overview of um, all the different options and I'll give you some examples, um, general examples in broad categories of health, wealth and relationships. So as I say, as I, as, I, as I do this, I invite you to try and relate this to your own work and use these examples to give you um, uh, give yourself ideas. Okay, so some examples in terms of health and wealth and relationships. If you're talking about the solution, you might say something like, I'll teach you a practice that can calm anxiety in minutes, if not seconds. If you're talking about a kind of wealth related offer, uh, if you're a sales coach, for example, I'll show you a three step process to easily close sales in the DMs. I'll coach you through a method to enable you to communicate clearly with your partner if you're a relationship co coach. So notice how specific they are. It's not just my offer helps you calm anxiety. It's calm anxiety in minutes. It's not just communicate clearly. These are these are you know perfectly valid things for people to want, but this is very specific. It communicate clearly with your partner. And this is important because solutions sell and so does specificity. I always have to be careful saying that word. Um, so the closer you can get to describing specific solutions, you are going to, if you can do that, you're going to quantum leap your marketing because you will be speaking directly to people who need and want and would benefit from your services. So, I mean, if you do nothing else from the class, that would be enough. Specific solutions sell. But there are other ways of talking about outcomes. One other way is the flip side of talking about solutions, and that's to talk about uh, leaving problems behind. Because people don't always want to just move towards something. They also often want to move away from things, from situations and circumstances that just don't support them or are harming them in some way. So this is about helping them see that your offer could provide a path away from whatever ails them, what, the, the place that they don't want to be in, the position they don't want to be in. And again, a really important point to, to note here is that this is not about pain point marketing. You know, that, that thing that some bro marketers promote, the idea of you, you make people feel terrible or more terrible about the poor situation they're in as a way of saying to them, if only you had my offer. If you had my offer, then you'd be okay. But if you don't have my offer, your life's going to be terrible. It's it's you know it's it's horrible. It's a horrible way of marketing. Um, this is about possibility marketing. This is about helping people see that it's possible to improve their situation. But that doesn't mean shying away from talking about the less fun stuff. So here, you know, it's pretty simple. You just talk about what your work helps them stop doing or not have to do any more or move away from, etc. So I'll help you. My coaching will help you. My downloadable PDF guide will help you. My program will help you. Whatever it is to stop doing the thing you don't want to do. Maybe it's overeating, over drinking, biting your nails, spending more money than you save, procrastinating over applying income generating strategies in your business, becoming jealous in your relationships feeling anxious in social situations. So it's acknowledging the position that they're in and speaking about your offer as a way of moving away from that. And of course, you would couple this with information about the good things that your offer can create. 
So those are big kind of, if you like, whole offer outcomes. You know, either the outcome of achieving what they want or moving away from the big problem they have. But there are different ways of talking about our outcomes almost on a scale. So one way is around talking about um, immediate outcomes. These are less big picture, but they're still important. It's not about the ultimate solution or solving the ultimate problem, but it's about providing necessary steps along the way. And immediate outcomes are the quick wins that your offer can give people. And it's important because sometimes when people um, buy an offer, when they buy a coaching program or whatever it is, they they need to feel confident in what they're buying and they may, they may feel that they need a quick win, a quick payoff for their investment. They, they might need something that will help boost their confidence in buying. Or it might be that they have a really big pressing problem to solve in relation to the area of, of, of life and business that your offer um, supports them in. So it might be um, like they have very little cash and they need to make money quickly. Um, and without doing that, they won't be able to commit to the bigger outcome. So we can talk about how our offers can help them achieve those quick wins as a way of helping to market the bigger outcome. So examples here would be things like, you know, you're you're selling a program that is about a long-term health promoting exercise program. And the, the ultimate outcome is that they have longer term health. Maybe they have a, um, a, a toned physique, a healthier weight, you know, whatever it is they want ultimately and really dream about having. But you can market it as being this exercise program will help you wake up feeling rested and full of energy within days. By the way, in everything I'm saying here, the underlying assumption is we are never making things up about our offers. So we only market things that we can stand behind. So you don't say this about your exercise program if you don't believe it's true. You only say it if you believe it's true and have evidence for yourself, either through your own experience or work with others, that it's true. And when you do that, you come from a position of authority and integrity in saying this. But think of how powerful that would be if somebody is perhaps feeling slightly trepidatious about committing to an exercise program to help them lose a significant amount of weight, for example, to know that within days they can feel better with your help. Very powerful. Similarly, this eating plan will reduce your your cravings for problematic foods within days. So you might have somebody who's worried about how can I stick to this eating plan? I've failed so many times before. My cravings will get the better of me. And you're helping them see that actually this program can help you reduce the craving pretty much right out of, uh, out of the gate. If you're a business coach and you're helping people market themselves online, somebody like me, for example, I'll give you two months worth of social media posts. So many people who are marketing their businesses online panic about having to market on social media because they think, what on earth am I going to say every day? Two months of social media posts would be a very attractive option for somebody about to embark, embark on that journey. In terms of money, finances, I'll help you find quick access money you didn't know you already have. I did a coaching program a few years ago with a um, a business development coach who also did financial coaching. And one of her freebies was um it was just a pdf guide and it was about helping people find money that was hidden in plain sight and she had an amazing track record she she found people on average hundreds and in some the cases of some people thousands of pounds that was easily accessible to them that they had missed and it was from things like cancelling subscriptions that were out of date and various things like that but really some some really creative stuff very attractive very attractive if you're feeling pressed for cash. Similarly, if you're if you're coaching on relationships, I'll teach you an easy conversation starter phrase. If you're about to be encouraging them, for example, to become more sociable, and they're thinking, how can I become more sociable? I've got social anxiety, or I've got this history of difficult relationships. I just don't feel confident. This is the kind of thing that can win their confidence. And by the way, some of the things that I'm sharing here and some of these ideas for quick wins, this is the kind of stuff that makes great bonuses for your programs. If you're putting together an offer that has a big outcome and you can include some quick wins as bonuses, very attractive. Another one, um, kind of similar, this is the baby steps option. This is about the steps along the way to a big outcome. And 
because clients often come to us with this idea that they have this really big outcome they need to get to and they know that there are steps they need to take in order to get to that outcome but they might have some accurate ideas about what those steps are but they may also have some quite inaccurate ideas about what those steps are uh, they might not really fully understand what the steps are and um what this is about is showing them the necessary steps and making it clear to them that your offer can help them take the ne necessary steps, that your offer can support them on that step-by-step-by-step -step -step process towards their goal. That makes it all the more compelling. And some examples here, um, things like, you know, a fitness program, I'll show you how to add weight training into your daily toning fitness re regime or routine. So some specific things, they might know they need to do this. They might think I want to tone up and I'm about to start this exercise program Program that's got lots of components, but actually I don't really know how to do weight training. You know, I need some help with that. Makes it clear that you can help them do that. Working on their finances, I'll teach you a simple financial practice, a financial management practice that will make budgeting and financial growth a cinch. I'll show you how to get your first two clients within a week or within two weeks. Um, if you're build, if you're speaking to people about building a, a coaching business, say, and then you can use the same process to build your client base. I'll coach you through widening your social circle in four weeks to increase your chance of finding true love. Somebody who's entered a relationship program that has promised the possibility of more exciting, fulfilling romantic relationships. Now, notice the connection here between the immediate thing, the stepping stone things, and the bigger picture, or, or rather between the immediate thing and the bigger picture and the stepping stones along the way. So weight training is the immediate thing that you can help them with in order to support their toning practice within their overall um, exercise routine that's going to lead them to your what probably is your bigger promise of health and vitality and um freedom from life-limiting illness, for example. Financial management practice leads to better budgeting, can lead to more likely financial growth. Finding your first client, you can do it once, you can do it twice, three times, four times, you can build a client base, you can build a business. Widen your social circle in a way that is manageable for you, you increase your chance of relationship success. So think stepping stones here. And it helps people see why your offer can help get them where they want to go. There are also uh, secondary outcomes. And I think of these as the ripple effects. These are the things where uh, you connect the thing that you're teaching and coaching people on with an extended outcome, something that happens as a byproduct of the main outcome. For example, um, your offer might be about helping people to cook fresh food you might be a, a you know a, a, a cookery coach or a, or a nutritional advisor and you are helping people to cook fresh food but you could connect that to better health so by joining my cook fresh food from scratch program as well as learning to cook fresh food from scratch very um alliterative um you'll reduce your health risks you'll improve your health by learning to launch your offer. I'm, I'm in the process at the moment of marketing um, an offer program, and I'll tell you very briefly about that at the end of this, um, which is about helping people to create their first or next offer. But in the process of doing that, it's inevitable that people will grow their audience. So by learning to launch your offer, you'll grow your audience. By learning to budget, you'll maximize your income. By improving your conversational skills, you'll increase your chance of finding love. So, you know, just a reminder, this shows that your offers don't always have to be about the ultimate big picture outcomes. They don't have to be about the big final destination outcomes. They can be about the smaller ones. That's perfectly legitimate for an offer. But if you are marketing that offer, being able to connect to the bigger outcomes is very powerful. You might mention it only, you know, secondarily, if at all, but nonetheless, it's there. And that's, that's powerful. And then taking it even further, 
we have very long-term outcomes, the, the happy future that can be ach achieved. This is almost the opposite of the short-term, immediate and ripple effect outcomes. This is about projecting your big outcome way into the future, even further down the line than your own lifetime, in fact. And this is a great way of igniting possibilities and reconnecting people to the why of what they're seeking. So, you know, what you could do here, uh, for example, is you're, if you're, a, a psychotherapist say and your work is about helping people to heal their traumatic experiences or heal from tra traumatic experiences clearly there's going to be an immediate impact for the person that you're working with and it can improve the chance of their happiness and wellness but you know and that's a great and marketable outcome that would be enough but it also means potentially healthier engagement with their children, which is likely to improve their children's well-being. And then doesn't it also follow that there's at least an increased chance that their children are going to be better or balanced parents to their kids? So it has a generational impact. And that's really, really compelling. It feels very powerful, very exciting. And again, it's not about promising all of that, but it's about talking about the possibility of that. Because people, when we're marketing things, sometimes marketing coaches act as though people are only selfish and only out to get what they really want in the immediate term. My experience is that that's not true. Very often people are very compelled by bigger picture stuff, by by helping other people. It can be very powerful, as long as they feel confident that their needs are also being met. So um, let's another example is if your offer is about cleaning up your current finances, it, it might be that that's all your client really wants. I want to pay off my debts. You know, the bailiffs are coming, help. But the compelling possibilities that you can also speak to are clean up your finances with this method and the things you'll learn will help you triple your lifetime earning potential, for example. Or if you're a business coach, learn to coach one to many now instead of just one to one and you'll lay the foundations of a six seven eight figure business doesn't mean mean that you'll want that kind of business doesn't mean that you'll definitely get that kind of business but this step along the way will give you a portal to that bigger future again a very compelling way of talking about your your modest little offer look what it can achieve longer term So a little bonus outcome offer uh, option here, and then we'll look at some other other types of uh, ways of speaking about your um, your your offers. And this is about connecting different life areas. So I've been giving examples here in health, wealth, and relationships, which are the kind of three main arenas that, that most of us work within. And the standard advice, and it's not bad advice, is that your offers, most offers anyway, should be positioned squarely within one of these because that makes marketing easier and clearer and cleaner. Um, and certainly I'd usually recommend that, you're sort of staying in your lane as it were. But it can be fun to pepper in hints of the way that your offer can connect to bigger issues. So your simple little health-based offer can actually increase a person's wealth. Why? Because if you're healthy, don't you have more energy? Don't you have more enthusiasm? Don't you have more get up and go to pursue your entrepreneurial dreams and if you're fit doesn't it make the physical side of life easier including the physical side of life in a relationship so there's a relationship link there and if you come in it at it from the relationship angle if you help someone have a stable relationship that's likely to create less stress in their life and more creativity so don't be afraid to paint that bigger picture and make those connections and join the dots of the the bigger ripple, not just ripple effect, but the bigger connective effect that your offers have. That can be very exciting. So um, those are different ways of talking about outcomes and their foundation. As I say, you should use them for about 50% of the time. But what about the rest of the time? So let's have a look at some other options or different options this is the one that i call the ear perker upper this is this is fun actually this is the one that you get to play with because it's about piquing people's curiosity what you want here is for 
it, what you want to do is talk about your offer in a way that makes people go, wait, what? How does that work? What's that about? That sounds fun or, or that sounds mysterious. I want to know more or that sounds weird. I, I have to know more about that. You want people to, they, you want their ears to perk up. How do you do it? Um, You do it by, one of the ways is to put things together uh, in a way that, that connects your offer's outcome with something that feels a bit off kilter. Um, and that means that the premise and the detail of the offer and the way that the offer works is not going to be obvious. It might even sound a bit unlikely. So things like, I'll show you as a, your health and fitness coach, I'll show you how to eat more, more volume of food, more variety of food, more level of nourishment in your food, and still lose weight if you need to. Now, some people hearing that would just go, yeah. But people who are used to thinking, I'm never going to be able to lose weight because I love food too much, are, are likely to go, oh, what? Or I'll share my foolproof method for how to get paid to create free content. Now, again, some people just go, mm, yeah, whatever. But people who are tired of creating free content as a way of building their businesses and thinking, when is the money going to come, are likely to go, how does that work? I want to know more about that. Or you might say, and anyone who's in a relationship, I'm sure will resonate with this. I'll coach you through a counterintuitive way. By saying it's counterintuitive, it makes it instantly like, what, what, what would that be? What, what, what would be different about it? I'd like to know more. A counterintuitive way to get your partner to listen to you. By the way, if anyone has created this program, I think we need to all be told about it. I'm not sure it's a real program. I'm making some of this up, but you, you understand the theory. But if you had access to a program that got your partner to listen to you without feeling like you're nagging them or provoking a hostile reaction, that would be compelling to somebody who wanted that but didn't think it was possible. So the ear perker upper is about kind of chiming with people's sense of this is impossible, I could never have this or this would never work to make them go, oh, there might be something here, tell me more. Another very powerful one, um, and it's really easy to understand this one, very simple premise, is painting a picture, visualizing the result in a way that paints a picture in the mind of your clients. So we know that some people are visual learners. In fact, most of us have some element of visual perspective um, in, our, in, our, in our minds. So it's really good to paint a picture of what your offer achieves. And that's about provoking in the mind's eye um, something that will make your offer's outcome, and in fact, the offer itself, real and immediate and attractive. You want them to see a vision of their happy future life when you do this. So you would consider phrases like, um, my offer helps you, and then you'd paint the picture, bound out of bed full of energy and enthusiasm. Get all your tasks done with space in your calendar. Wake up to an inbox full of purchases. Raise the temperature in the bedroom so high, you'll set off the sprinkler system. Now, notice that all of these statements make you see something. You can see these things happening. You can see yourself bounding out of bed full of energy and enthusiasm. You can see your calendar wonderfully spacious at the same time as you're getting all your tasks done. You've painted a picture. That's attractive. As well as helping people see things, you want to help people feel things. That was about creating an image. This is about creating a feeling. And we spoke earlier about helping clients connect to the why of why they want the outcome of your offer. And one of the best ways to do that is to help them feel that why. So there are different ways of doing this and you've got to make a judgment based on what's right for you and for your offer and your clients. But we do it through emotion-based language. Things like, being very, very straightforward. You, you don't get too up in your head about this. It can be as straightforward as saying, I'll show you how to feel. That's the emotion bit. I'll show you how to feel happy, relaxed, peaceful, powerful, sexy, confident, whatever it is that your offer helps people feel. You just tell them, state it outright. Another way of doing it is by 
connecting to an emotion they may have had in the past, which could be a positive emotion or a less positive one. So it might be that you would say, and you might get more specific around this based on your client base, but but broadly, I'll show you how you can turn your challenging past into a profitable future. So that might be something, for example, uh, um, someone who is teaching people how to become coaches. And very often, you know, coaching is based on going through an experience of our own, developing from that experience, achieving something for ourselves, and then showing other people the way. Well, you can capture that in, you know, using your challenging past to build a profitable future by by turning your experiences into services that you can support other people with or turning your relationship lessons into deeper understandings within your family. So it's about connecting either outright stating the emotional side of things or connecting the emotion that a client has experienced in the in the past to what your offer helps them achieve. So that's the emotion side. Um, this one is a really practical one and it's one of the most powerful options really because there is a there's a number of reasons that people seek out coaches and therapists and healers and so on. But one of the big reasons, especially if they could do some of the stuff that we help them do themselves by, you know, hunting and pecking all over the internet and looking at YouTube videos or reading books, it's because people don't want to have to do that. They want ease and speed and direction. They want the the good outcome, the good results in a low friction way. So ease and speed and direction help them to achieve that. And you make that clear in the way that you speak about your offers. And again, it's about using a language that speaks to that ease and speed and direction. I'll show you an easy way to do whatever it is you help them to do. I'll show you a step-by-step -step way. I'll teach you a low stress way. I'll teach you a shortcut too. Um, I'll coach you to do the thing that you do in a certain amount of time. I'll show you a faster way to do it. So I'm just overtly playing to that ease and speed and direction. I'll give you the ease. I'll give you the speed. I'll give you the direction in my coaching container. Another practical one. Um, and this is fun because you can also add in a bit of curiosity here. Um, this is where you point to the secret sauce that your offer has. Um, and the secret sauce is you, by the way. So it's whatever you are bringing to the offer that makes you unique. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know, anything any of us does, the way that we do it is unique. Nobody else can do it the way we do it. But there are multiples of us of us doing the same thing or, or people like us doing the same thing. You know, I'm a business coach. There are millions of business coaches. And there are even millions of business coaches that do the kind of business coaching I do where we combine um, strategic you know, simple strategies and um, entrepreneurial practices with energetic and um, magical elements. Lots of people do that. Nobody does it quite like me. Nobody does what you do quite like you. You are your own secret sauce. And this is what adds curiosity. This is where you point out the secret sauce. It gives your offer an air of exclusivity, which is also... Um, a great marketing tactic so again you only use this if it's genuine and authentic so for example um it can be something as simple as here's my secret hack to this is my the thing that i've discovered that you can do in this area that's this that's really easy and obvious but nobody else seems to know it but i know it and i'll share it with you or here's my foolproof method for doing something you know, it might be a, a method where uh, people struggle to do it without help and you're offering them the option of an easy way of doing it, a step-by-step -step way of doing it. And then if you have something that you have developed as a coach, here's my bespoke step-by-step -step process for doing whatever it is we do. And you can build in curiosity here as well. So I received an email uh, not all that long ago from a business coach who um, marketed along these lines. Here's how a simple email sent to the people I already know, massively multiplied my audience. So it piques curiosity. It gives a sense of they've got some kind of secret that they know, and it entices interest. You want to know more from them about it. So 
marketing to your special techniques that you may have developed, your secret sauce, very powerful. So getting even more practical, this, this next cluster before we move into the, the final cluster, is really about providing frameworks to help people think about your offer. And the first and most obvious one is tactics and templates, because big outcomes, even you know little outcomes are great, but sometimes for clients or prospective clients, it's a case of give me a checklist to go with this. I need something to help me through the process. So this is about helping clients feel confident that they'll get some resources to help them on the journey. It, it, it's often about helping them uh, tick off the steps they need to take along the way without having to reinvent the wheel. Um, and this is about the methods you share, the elements, the materials you share that make that easier. Now, going back to what I said at the beginning, this is part of the element part of the offer hierarchy at the top of the triangle. So remember, you don't want to only talk about these. You don't even want to talk about them all, most of the time, but they do have their place and you want to talk about them if you have them or when you have them. So again, you'd say things like, I'll give you a uh, one page full body exercise routine if you're a fitness coach. I'll give you a um, quick glance list of affirmations if you're helping people with their uh, personal development and they are working with the law of attraction, say. I'll give you an easy budget spreadsheet if they're trying to reshape their financial future and are thinking, where do I start? I'll give you a template for a high converting sales page if they're new to business coaching, for example, or if they're new to selling online. Relationship coach, I'll give you a list of romantic ideas for Valentine's Day. So it's tactics, templates, easy, applicable, almost done for you things or things that you can follow along and do can be very attractive, especially when sprinkled in among the bigger outcomes. Time parameters, also very important, similar to the ease and speed piece that I mentioned earlier, but this is more about quantifying the time your offer saves your clients or creates for your clients. And this is a great time to practice my favorite word again, specificity. Try saying that without your teeth in. It, it's a way of painting a picture of what happens in your offer when somebody enters your world and engages with your offer. So for example, um, to give people a sense of the time that you might save them, you might say things like, and again, it's about being authentic, you know, making sure that we're authentic about this. But if we if we can be authentic, we could say things like, I can show you how to stop a panic attack in 30 seconds or less. I have this method. I can show you how to outline your novel in a weekend. I could help you map out your mini workshop. If you want to deliver something like this, for example, your mini workshop, I can help you map it out in under two hours. I can help you clean your house in half the time. I can help you feel more confident in just minutes. I can show you how to double your social circle in just four weeks. So it's quantifying the time because people often come into our offers feeling deeply that they want the outcome that we're offering, but having this, this internal worry that it's going to take too long or will be too difficult or somehow they won't be able to do it or they won't be able to go at the pace that's required. So this is about being clear with them about the time parameters that your offer creates for them. And, and also time constraints. So it just gives them a sense of how, lo how long something might take for good or ill. And speaking of quantifying, by the way, that little emoji next to quantify is an abacus. And it shows my age that I know what that is without having to Google what an abacus is. This can be a really powerful way to convey the impact of your offer. If you can quantify the results in some way, and again, it's not about making stuff up, it's about, about really standing behind your offer and what it can achieve. If you can quantify it, you should definitely share the figures. So examples here would be things like, you know, my method can cut your child's sleepless nights by 40% or help you lose that last stubborn 10 pounds in three weeks or you know earn 2k a month more with your side hustle reduce arguments with your spouse by 50 percent double sexy time with your partner it's quantifiable changes and look at how powerful they are because it's another way of painting a picture if you're a new parent 
and I know that many of you will have been parents, so you'll have been here. If you're a new parent and you are struggling with your child's sleeping pattern and you find an offer that could, could, you know, credibly cut your child's sleepless nights by 40%, you are going to be interested. The same for the others. You're not making this up. Again, it's about, you know, making sure you quantify what you can quantify. So you may need to lean into different ways of quantifying things. Another way you can quantify things is by using evidence. If there is evidence that relates to your work, you know, if there's evidence that backs up your work, if, for example, you are someone who coaches people on the benefits of walking in nature, if you find a study that cites the benefits that can be had by walking in nature, then that is a powerful thing to talk about when you're talking about your work. So, you know, examples like, I teach a simple process proven to reduce anxiety by 40% in a recent study by Aberdeen University. I'm making this up, by the way. I went to Aberdeen University, which is why I'm using Aberdeen University as an example. But, you know, notice here words like proven and evidence-based and the quantifiable change and also the institutional authority. So I'll share an evidence-based eating plan that's shown to reduce the likelihood of life-limiting illness by 60% according to the Mayo Clinic. Powerful, powerful stuff. If, if true, you're not, you know, uh, these are made up. I don't know if these are true, but you would be finding things that are true. They sound very conceivable. There are studies that, that cite the benefits of a huge amount of the work that people like us do. Finances, access tax-free saving allowances, guaranteed to increase your investment value by 20% in three years, according to the Institute for Fiscal Studies. If you're interested in financial growth, that's the kind of evidence that will be music to your ears. I use a counselling process shown to increase, increase the likelihood of relationship reconciliations according to a peer-reviewed relate study so it's about linking the potential outcome that somebody wants the quantifiable evidential base that you have been able to find and then the institutional authority if you can link those three things together credibly and um, authentically very powerful marketing material right there so we're coming to the, the end now. Um, we've covered a lot. So bear with me. There's just a few more that I want to share with you. This is a good one. It's using power phrases, turns of words that can help you talk about your offer in different ways. Things like, I'll help you do the thing that you help them do so that you achieve the big outcome. So I'll help you do such and such so that you achieve an outcome. I'll help you do this thing without having to, and then you would cite something that you know your ideal clients don't want to do. This is where market research comes in and knowing what your clients want to do and also what they don't want to do. You know, it might be something like, um, you know, uh, well, in business coaching, it might be, for example, I want to build a six-figure business without having to spend money on ads. So if I know that about my clients, if I know that's what they want, that would be a compelling thing to be able to talk about. I can help you build your business to six figures without spending money on ads. Clear. Compelling. I can help you do the thing just like, and you give an example of somebody, maybe somebody famous who's achieved something, or maybe it's a case study. I'll talk about that in a second. I can help you do the thing even if, and then you talk about something that they think they might need, but you know they don't need. So they might think, I can't do this thing. I can't build this business without more experience or training. You know, again, in my Offer Wizard program, one of the things I've used in the marketing of that is I can help you ideate, uh, validate, um, create, promote, launch, market, sell, your offer, your first or your next offer, even if you have never created an offer before. Now, what that does, of course, is that somebody who's reading your copy or your advert or your newsletter 
and they're thinking, oh, this sounds wonderful. This this program sounds marvelous. But in their head, they've got this thing of, but it won't work for me because I don't have such and such. And then as if by magic, as if you are in their mind, you say, this will work for you, even if you don't have that thing that you're thinking of now. Powerful stuff. I'll help you do the thing. Plus, I'll give you, and this is where you would list additional things like your templates and checklists and so on. So power for, power phrases, useful to pepper into your, your content. Another fun one. This is about flipping expectation. It chimes a bit with the earlier one I shared around stimulating curiosity. But this is actually a bit more about emphasizing the unlikely and the absurd. Not so much absurd in the eyes of everyone, but absurd or unlikely in the eyes of your ideal clients. For example, you know, again, um, we mentioned the previously the lose weight while still eating more. Well, this is taking it a bit further. I'll show you how to lose weight while eating more ice cream. Now, I'm not advocating necessarily that for a fitness and health program, you would do this. But if you have a legitimate way of showing people how they can lose weight and be healthy and achieve the other things you're trying to do, and they can eat more ice cream while they're doing it, it's likely that somebody is going to go, but that that's that's bizarre. That That doesn't make sense. That's absurd. Tell me more, especially if they like ice cream. I'll help you to build muscle with no weightlifting. So somebody might want to build muscle. They might know that they need to build lean muscle mass in order to be healthier as part of their program, but you'll help them to do it without weightlifting. I'll help you achieve a six-figure launch with absolutely no ad spend. I'll help you increase your social contacts, even if you're introverted, socially anxious, and prefer to stay at home. Things that people will feel may not be possible, but you're making it clear to them are indeed possible. So finally, a cluster around people. And there are four ways to leverage people, including yourself, because you're a people too, in talking about your offer. They are testimonials, case studies, your own story, and overcoming objections. So for testimonials, you know, I think we all know that testimonials are the holy grail of marketing. If you have them, you should use them. If you don't have them, but could get them, you must get them and collate them because they're easy to forget or dismiss or lose. So the way you do it is by giving people a good experience of you right from the start, whether it's in, you know, in your offer, but also in your pre-offer material, you know, in free content, for example, in interactions with you. And then you, you do things like you screenshot positive social media comments. You screenshot extracts from thank you emails. You, um, invite people to send you recorded videos and audios um, giving you testimonials. You know, ask. People are always afraid to ask for this kind of stuff. But my experience is people like to be asked, especially if they've had a good experience with you. And a form of words you could use is something like, you know, I hope you enjoyed this experience. I'd love your honest feedback. And, you know, you, you take the honest feedback. And then, you know, you can say to them, if your feedback's positive, I'd love to be able to share it with others to encourage them to take part next time. Do I have your permission to do that? You can remain anonymous if you wish. Now, my experience is there are three things that people can do to a request like that. One is they can ignore it. And after a while, as an entrepreneur, you develop a tough skin where you realize that when people ignore it, it's not usually because, because of hostile reasons. It's because they're busy and, you know, they just have other things to do. Or they can say no. That can be sometimes a bit harder to take. But, you know, every no moves you closer to the next yes. So they say no. That just tells you that that's not the person you want a testimonial from or they say yes and my experience is more often than not people say yes and they give you testimonials that you think this is far better than I could have expected so leverage testimonials work towards getting testimonials case studies this is an actual story of client success where you say client x achieves such and such and this is great if you um don't have case don't have testimonials um uh and haven't yet been able to get them you can uh you can anonymize case studies you might ask permission of people to use them as a case study if they can be identified but if they can't um or you change enough of the details to make it still relevant and authentic but without any um risk of identification then you can absolutely use case studies in in your marketing when you say my offer helps you to do this this and this just like client x who achieved the following 
and then you give that story. Or you might get more specific and say, here's how client X or client Y did this particular thing, and here's the results they got, and that's what my offer can achieve for you as well. And then there's your story. And your story is valuable. And you know, as I say, I sometimes hear business coaches coaches kind of dismiss this and say that only testimonials and case studies are valid. That's that's just not true. Um, especially at the beginning when you are just starting out, many people say, but I haven't had clients or or not many, and I certainly don't have t testimonials to share yet. Your story is important. Um, and it can stay important. So if you think about, you know, even really established practitioners like someone like um uh, well, someone like Byron Katie, for example, um, who teaches the process called The Work and who has a very specific story. She has a story of a kind of a, an awakening experience. She's very established. She's been working with people for years, decades, and still regularly in her live events and live trainings and so on, and in her books, etc., will tell the story of her awakening experience because it's very compelling. And uh, it, it helps illustrate what it is that she shares. That can be true of you as well. Not just when you're starting out, but always. Um, and even when you have testimonials. But again, remember, specificity and solutions sell. So be clear about where you were and what you did. Um, and connect it with how it can help your client. So it's not enough to say, look at me, I'm fabulously fit and healthy now. You want to be saying, here is how I ate healthy, hearty, delicious meals and got lean, strong and healthy at age 50 plus. Or, you know, here's how I healed my relationship and I've never been happier. And here's how I can help you do it too. That's that's the bit that's important, connecting your experience with your client's desires. And then finally, I want to um, close by, in terms of the 21 ways, uh, in terms of talking about overcoming objections. And really, everything we've been talking about here is about helping clients overcome objections. All the ways that you speak about your offers help your clients think, yes, this is for me. Even that, even though I had these doubts, this is for me. Um, because the more ways you do it, the more chance you are, uh, chances you have of hitting the thing that will trigger that client's interest in your work. Um, but what's, what's lovely about making sure that your marketing helps people overcome objections ahead of time is that it means you don't have to do it so much on things like sales calls, which is one of the things that many of us dread. I know that I certainly did when I, when I did sales calls, that fear of, um, not even fear, but just that discomfort of having to, to overcome people's objections, worrying that this was somehow pricking them into a program, even though you know knew it wasn't, it can feel very uncomfortable for, for some of us. But what I found was that the more you can help people overcome objections in their own mind ahead of time, the easier the selling gets. And if you really do this well, if you really overcome objections in your copy and your marketing, you'll be surprised at how confident people will feel in buying from you. And you'll be surprised, um, you know, they will buy at a speed and a lack of friction that will shock you if you get this right. So the ways you do this are by weaving together the likely objection with um, the outcome and neutralize the objection at the same time. So for example, if somebody, if you're marketing to somebody, uh, a fitness program, and maybe it's a fitness program for the over 50s, then you will have people in that audience who have doubt that they can actually get fit very easily after a certain age, or at least not without exhaustion or risk of injury. So you're able to say things like, my program will help you get to fit over 50 without exhaustion or risk of injury. You know, if somebody is trying to build an online business and they have a full-time job, they might be thinking, I'm never going to do this. I'm too tired all the time. I haven't got enough time to do it. It's not practical, et cetera, et cetera. But they really want to do it, but they have all these doubts. I'll help you build your business even if you have a full-time job. And you can go into more detail, you know, even if you have a full-time job and you want to build your business to six figures, um, you know, in a relationship area, um, I'll help you find love again, even if your heart has been broken. Notice I'm weaving in some of those power phrases there, but this is about connecting the objection. I can't do this. I can't find love again. My heart is broken and I don't trust anyone. So I doubt I can do it, even though I want to do it. You're ahead of time saying, 
my program can help you do this, even if. And you might then go into more detail in your copy, and certainly when you're actually talking to people about the offer, about how that would work, so that it's not just saying that it works, it's describing how it would work. But if if you then are speaking to people who feel confident that the objection they had had been at least in some degree assuaged, then that's going to make things so much easier in terms of marketing your offer. Wow, that was a canter through 21, I think it was actually 22 ways to talk about your services. So thank you very much for being here and for taking it all in, whether you are in the Zoom room or are watching this on replay or are um, watching it on Facebook. I hope it's been helpful and I hope it's given you some ideas to use for different ways to talk about your offers and even given you some ideas for offers that you can create because as well as using this for content creation and sales page copy and sales conversations, um, it might actually even give you some ideas about the kind of things that your your people want. And on that subject, I mentioned my program offer wizard. This is not going to be a big sales pitch. I just wanted to briefly let you know that if you wanted help putting together your next or your first offer, then offer wizard is available. And um, I would be very happy to work with you. It's a group coaching program. And in it, I am working with people to ideate, create, validate, launch, promote, and sell their offers. And as I said earlier, it's whether you, uh, your, it's your first offer or your next offer, and even if you've never set up an offer before. Uh, but it also is great for you if you have done this before and just want to uh, hone your skills. So the doors are open at the moment. I'll be enrolling for the next couple of weeks before the doors close. And um, I'm very excited because places are filling. And at this point, I have about four spaces left in the program. Um, it will run for eight weeks. We start at the end of this month, which is the, on the 29th of April. And it includes a mix of training where I'll be uh, delivering training on the different elements of creating and uh, marketing and selling an offer. It also includes a free one-to-one -one session with me um, and then access to more one-to-one -one support if you if you want it, but that's not necessary for success in this program. So that's absolutely only optional. It's the first time I've run this program in this particular way, um, but it is shaping up to be my signature offer. So when I re relaunch it later in the year, which is what I'm intending to do, it's going to be at a significantly higher price. The price for this cohort goes up to $444 for the program one week from now, which is still a bargain. It's less than half the price of the next launch price. But um, I have a special early bird offer running, so you can access it uh, until um, uh, the end of next week, I think we're doing it, uh, at $333. So um, I hope, uh, well, people have been taking advantage of that, and I hope that, that will be of interest to Others. I'll send out details of Offer Wizard when I send out the replay of this program and also the slides. Um, and that's it from me. So um, thank you very much for for being here. It's um, it's it's always great to see you, and it's lovely to see some familiar faces and also some new faces. Uh, and whether you're in the Zoom room or watching on replay or in Facebook, I'm really delighted that you are here. So I'll be in touch soon with the replay details. Best wishes to you all. Good luck with all of your work. And I'll see you all again very soon. Let me see if I can stop sharing. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Great to see you all. Take care of yourselves.